welcome back. My name is Elizabeth Symington, and today's video we're starting off with a pop quiz. I want you to tell me what does this braille quote say behind me? I'll give you a second to read it. Your clue is that it's made up of four words written in contracted braille. Did you get it? If you didn't, that's totally okay. I'm gonna help you out. So the quote says, choose to be happy. So when I was going through the NLS course and when I got my homework back, I wasn't always happy because I realized I made stupid mistakes on my homework and that was really frustrating. I would invert I's and E's. I would forget the numeric indicator, just dumb things that I knew better. I was spending too much brain power on what do these dots mean versus am I applying the transcribing rules that I just learned about? So once I realized that, I went to my library and I checked out braille board books and then I moved up to picture books and finally I read a 900 braille page autobiography by Eric Weinmayer called Touch the Top of the World. So Eric was the first blind person to climb to the tallest mountain on each of the seven continents. It was a very inspiring read. But today I'm going to talk about my thought process when I'm sight reading a book in braille. I'm also going to share with you a couple places you can download braille reference sheets so if you don't already know all the Braille contractions, you'll have a place to look them up. So Braille is made up in a combination of six dots. So these six dots, they look like a number six domino, two columns of three. And to make things easier, the dots are numbered so we can actually talk about them. In the first column, we have dots one, two, three. And in the right column, we have dots four, five, six. So this is a Braille alphabet chart that I made that you can download and print. Something I wanted to point out real quick is that we have the alphabet written for a braille writer and below that we have the alphabet for a slate. So let me just explain that. A braille writer is a braille typewriter. So when you're using a braille writer, you would type just like on a QWERTY keyboard. A slate is a manual way of writing braille. You would take a stylus and you would punch the braille dots on the back side of the paper. And then when you flip it over, you'd have the braille shapes. So you're writing the mirror of all of the letters. So when you memorize the alphabet, you need to memorize for Braille writer, because that is reading the alphabet forwards. And another secret is that you want to memorize the letter with the dot number. So A is dot one, B dots one, two, because when you get to the slate, everything's the mirror. A is still dot one, but everything is mirrored. And it can get confusing because you have mirrors and versions of the Braille signs. So by memorizing the letter, with the dot numbers gives you something to hold on to. So I think the Braille alphabet is beautifully arranged. We have letters A through J, and those letters are made up with a combination of the top four dots. So when you're reading your book, if you find a Braille cell that has dots that are only in the top two rows, then you'll know it's a letter A through J. And then we have K through T, and what's really cool is that K through T has the exact same dots as A through J. A is dot one, K is dot one plus dot three. B is dots one, two, L is dots one, two, three. C dots one, four, M, one, three, four. So K through T is the same as A through J plus dot three. So next we have the last third of the alphabet, U through Z. It follows the same pattern as K through T plus the addition of dot six. So A is dot one, K is dots one, three, U is dots one, three, six. B is dot one, two, L dots one, two, three, V, one, two, three, six. So the only exception, way over here on the right hand side, we have the W hanging out by himself. He breaks the rule because when Braille was invented in the 1800s, the letter W wasn't common. So it had to be added later. Underneath the alphabet, we have common punctuation. And then I highly recommend getting a slate one because it's so much fun adding Braille to like playing cards and making your own flashcards. And they're inexpensive. It's about $15 to buy a slate. So you can print off this alphabet chart and I will have the link below for that. But next I'm going to show you three Braille reference sheets that you can download and print today. The first one is from Aroga Technology. 
So I have zoomed in on it because I want to show you something in particular. Then I zoom out so you can see the whole page. So I wanted to point out this box of retired contractions. So on January 4th, 2016, the United States switched over to a different way of writing Braille. We switched from eBay to UEB. eBay is English Braille American Edition and UEB is Unified English Braille. But it tells you the alphabet, all the different indicators, punctuation, alphabetic word signs, initial letter contractions. So everything you need to know when you're reading a Braille book. It doesn't tell you when to use the contraction, but you'll be able to use it to at least decipher what it is that you're reading. So the next Braille reference sheet that I'm going to show you is called the Quick List Sign and Symbols. It's created by my Braille mentor and hero, Dan Gergen. Dan has put together this five page document. It's the most thorough of all of the Braille reference sheets that I have seen. He covers mass symbols, different UEB symbols, different UEB literary symbols, word signs, short forms, um, all the indicators, different types of indicators, like how to make something bold or italic, numbers. And then the last page, you can write in Braille symbols that are not on this list. And then the third Braille reference sheet is over on DuxburySystems.com website. It is produced by Duxbury, so if you want to download it, you need to go to their homepage. And then on the left-hand side, click on Braille. And then under the UEB Braille Chart and Tactiles header, click on the very first item that says UEB Braille Chart available for download. Scroll down to the bottom, and under UEB Braille Chart, you have to check the box. It says, I understand that the Braille Chart does not show when to use contractions. Check the box and click on this text. So we will follow the directions. So the page reloads, and it looks like it's exactly the same, but if you scroll down, at the bottom, you'll see it says, pick one to indicate your interest in obtaining a Braille chart. I am blind and want to teach others about Braille. I am studying to be a special education teacher. I'm a student doing a report on an issue related to blindness or Braille, and it goes all the way through. I'm going to click on I'm curious about Braille. And this pulls up their one page PDF. So I like this one because it's a lot simpler and it can be a little less overwhelming if you're totally new to Braille. And what I recommend if you're going through the NLS UEB Literary Certification course is that as you learn all these different Braille signs, you know, the group signs, the strong word signs, take a highlighter and mark it off. So by the time you get to lesson 11, you will find that from A to Y, you have marked off all of those Braille signs. And you have also highlighted quite a few of the punctuation signs on the right hand side, as well as some of the composition signs on the left. For me, making a visual of my progress of what I've learned in Braille is really encouraging. So I strongly recommend that you print this off and highlight the signs as you learn them. So if you're new to sight reading Braille, I recommend you find a board book. It's gonna be so much more encouraging reading 20 board books than it would be to stumble through one chapter of Harry Potter and Braille. Just trust me, just give it a try. So this book is called Counting. And it's published by DK Braille. And it is a board book with tactile pictures. That means the pictures are raised. So I opened up to page four. We have four trees that are all raised. The trunk's a different texture from the leaves. We have the number four in print and in braille. And then for vocab, in case you don't already know this, this is a twin vision book, meaning that we have the same exact sentence written in print and in braille. So print is the alphabet that sighted people can see and braille is the tactile reading and writing system for the blind and print disabled. And another word for you to learn is embossed braille. So that means that this braille is raised. So the reason I picked this book is because the braille shows up really nicely on the camera and it's really nice on my eyes. And that's because the dots are colored black and they're on white paper. So that's something to keep in mind when you're looking for a book to sight read is you want some contrast. And that's actually why I prefer to read digital braille files instead of reading in a paper book is because I can zoom in on the font and I have a black dot on a white background. But that's just personal preference. I want you to read lots of different types of braille books and you figure out what you like. So it can be a little tricky spotting the braille cells, but it's just going to take practice. Like in this first cell, it can be a little hard to figure out is that a dot three or a dot six. 
Is that dot in the bottom left corner or the bottom right? One way to figure out is to compare it to the Braille cell below it. And from doing that, we can tell that is a dot six. And common sense also tells us that the first letter of a sentence is capitalized. So you're going to see this Braille sign all the time. A dot six is the capital letter indicator, meaning that the very next letter is capitalized. So a fun fact about the Braille alphabet, in Braille, they don't have a different shape for uppercase and lowercase letters. Instead, you just put a dot six before a letter to show that it's capitalized. Moving on to the second Braille cell, we're looking at the pattern of the dots. We have dots one, two, and four. So they live in the top half of the Braille cell, which tells us that that is a letter that is A through J, because that fits the pattern. So flip over to the Braille reference sheet and figure out what this letter is. We have a capital F. Third Braille cell, we have dots one, three, five. Ooh, do you remember the rule? If there's a dot three, what part of the alphabet that is? That is between letters K through T. So it's an O. The next one, we have dots one, three, six. And when you have a braille cell with the dots three, six, that tells us that this is a letter between U through Z. So I know you're smart, you've just figured out that is U. And we just keep going with this thought process of deciphering. This next letter has a dot three, so that means it's through K through T. We have a blank cell for a space. The next letter has a dot three. So that also tells us it's K through T. The one after that is also K through T. Then we have dots in just the top half of the Braille cell. So we know that's A through J. Same with the one after that. It's the exact same letter. And then the last letter in this word has a dot three. So that's K through T. So we'd keep going with that same thought process all the way through till we get to the end. And at the end of the sentence, we have dots two, five, six. So most punctuation live in the bottom half of the cell and common sense tells us it's probably a period. And you will confirm that on your alphabet card. Could be an exclamation mark, could be a question mark, could be other things, but you're gonna see this all the time. Two, five, six is period. So in the board book I just showed you, one braille cell was assigned to one letter. That was uncontracted braille. Everything was spelled out. There were no contractions in there. This book is The Courage of Helen Keller by Francine Sabine, and it is transcribed by Seedlings Braille Books for Children, an amazing nonprofit that I just love. And this book is written in contracted braille. So this is a standard size braille book. It's 11 and a half by 11 inches. Braille books will have a print title page, and then the very next page is the braille title page. And this is something people forget when they turn in their manuscript to include the print version of their title page. So don't forget to do that. So if you get in the habit of reading just fun braille books, you're going to get used to seeing that this is uh, what's required. You need to have a print version of the braille title page. So I have zoomed in on the last two lines of the braille title page. I wanted to show you that this is in contracted braille. So let's decipher this together. We have a dot six. So we know that the very next letter is capitalized. We have dots three, five. So we know this isn't just a straight up letter from the alphabet, this is a contraction. So if you look at your reference card, you'll know that this is the word I-N for in. And then we have a space. We have a dot six. So the very next letter is capitalized. And this is a little tricky to see, but you'll get used to it. That is a dot five followed by the letter O. So that's called an initial letter contraction where the initial letter, the first letter, the O, stands for the rest of the word. And it is the word one, O-N-E. And we have a space, capital letter indicator. We have the letter V. But we know it's in the last third of the alphabet because we have dots three and six. And then we have a letter that has a dot three. So we know it's from the letters K through T. And then same with the next one, it has a dot three. The one after that has dots three and six. So down here, we have a P and then a numeric indicator one. So in the alphabet, A through J also double 
for letters 1 through 9 plus the number 0. So A is 1, B is 2, and so on. And the way you distinguish a letter from a number, you put a numeric indicator before it, which is dots 3, 4, 5, 6. So the way you read this, it is P, numeric indicator, 1, space, then we have the braille sign for and, space, numeric indicator, 1, dash, numeric indicator, 1, 0. So that's 10. So something to keep in mind is that the dash cancels numeric mode. So you have to repeat the numeric indicator after it. Otherwise, this would be read as A-H. One other thing I wanted to point out about this book is that the braille is embossed on just one side of the page. And that makes it so much easier on my eyes because I'm picking out the patterns for the dots. So I want a good strong light source to give me a shadow on one side. But if I had braille on both sides of the page, I'd have the shadows from the raised dots on one side, plus I'd have the indents for the braille that's on the other side of the page. And that makes it really hard to pick out those patterns. So personally, I like books that are embossed, not interpoint. Interpoint means that there's braille on both sides. And most books are embossed that way because it makes sense. That means you use up half as much paper. But if you have a question about how the book is embossed, before buying it, just send the publisher an email and ask. So I hope you're feeling encouraged and excited to go out there and start practicing reading braille for the fun of it. So now I want you to watch my next video right over here. I'm going to tell you where you can download a free e-braille book. There's an entire library online of braille books just waiting for you. So go watch it now, seriously.